So internship season is approaching and you wanna know when is the best time to apply for an internship. For those of you who are new here, welcome. My name is Ranesh and I'm a data scientist working at a tech startup. Not too long ago, I was a student looking for internships, applying for hundreds of jobs and trying to understand when is the best time to apply for an internship. Along the way, I got a couple dozen interviews, got a few offers. And like I said before, I'm currently working as a data scientist at the same tech startup that I work for as an intern. I also took a lot of notes and documented the whole process so that I can share it with you guys once I gain some experience. Now that brings us to present day where I'm currently on the other side of the coin, interviewing and hiring interns to help them gain some experience and mentor them to success. Now back to the question at hand, when is the best time to apply for an internship? I think the answer kind of depends on what type of internship you're looking to land. For example, what are your goals? Is this your first internship where you're just looking for experience or is this your last internship where you're looking to get a bigger pay and maybe even a return offer for a full-time position after you graduate? This also depends on the time period. Are you looking for a summer internship specifically or a fall or a spring one? For the purposes of this video, we're gonna assume that you're looking for a summer internship. This matters because different industries and different fields tend to have seasonality when it comes to hiring. All right, with all that out of the way, let's break it down to three categories. Let's say you're someone who's looking to land a big internship. Let's say it's your dream company, a Mang or a Fang company like Amazon. Big companies like these tend to open their applications about a year to nine months before it even starts. So for a company like Amazon, for example, if they're looking to open up an intern position for the summer of 2025, they're probably gonna start opening applications up at around Q3 or Q4 of 2024. So sometime between July to October would be my guess. Bigger companies tend to have a lot of competitive applicants, so be prepared for a ton of volume and competition. They're also usually able to afford the best candidates just because they have the deepest pockets. So if I were you and if I was looking to land a big company, I would definitely look into putting more time and effort into catering my specific applications for those companies. Next, we're moving on to mid-sized companies. These companies tend to have about 500 to 1,000 employees. These companies are also also usually very prepared and organized and they tend to open up their applications about six to nine months beforehand. So in the case of a summer 2025 internship, you'd be expecting the applications to be out at some time between October to December at the earliest. The competition and pay here is not gonna be as much as bigger companies, but do still expect some competition just because these days, I guess there's a lot of saturated uh, applicants out there. There's a lot of people applying using LinkedIn's easy apply. So it makes things easier for them to just throw in their applications. So do still expect some competition. When it comes to qualifications and expectations, mid-sized companies are generally more forgiving. There's not going to be as many technical questions or even rounds of interviews in general. The next group I want to talk about are smaller companies and these companies tend to have lesser than 500 employees. These companies tend to open up their applications at around three to six months before the start date. So if you're looking for a summer 2025 internship, I would expect the applications to be posted and open at around January to March. Usually the competition for this company size group is the lowest just because the company name isn't as heard of as compared to the other two groups and they don't really have as much money to fork out for a lot of job postings on different job boards. However, I do want to mention that within the small size company group, there is a subset of extra small companies that have less than 100 employees, which are usually considered as startup. And with startups, the qualification requirements and the expectations are usually higher just because they don't really have as much resources to mentor and teach. So they're expecting someone to come in for cheap labor and be able to do the same uh, workload, take on the same workload as a full-time employee. You're also probably going to be expected to wear a lot of hats and have some experience in different industries beforehand. The interviews for the smaller size companies are usually not intense at all. And usually at max, they have three interview rounds and the pay is also generally lower. Now, depending on the category of jobs you're looking for, there's also specific areas where you can apply for those jobs. LinkedIn, Glassdoor, and Indeed are the obvious and safest options just because they have the largest networks. A lot of companies tend to use them. However, they do induce a lot of competition. Stuff like easy apply on LinkedIn encourages laziness and a lot of people just tend to press the button, submit a resume without catering it specifically. Don't even look at the job description and hope for the best. If you're looking for larger companies like Google, Amazon, Meta, stuff like that, I would recommend looking at their job board specifically and staying up to date on when they're posting these applications just because within 24 hours they tend to get thousands of candidates applying for those jobs so you want to be sure to apply directly on the job board and on time just so you don't miss out other alternative job boards are simplify and even handshake for those of you who have access to those they're very good very helpful and very niche so I strongly recommend checking those out and if you have a company in mind it's always good to check their job board so you can stay up to date and apply directly within their system or you could go on site to their remote office and try applying there for smaller size companies Companies, the best way to apply in my opinion is through career fairs or even going to their on-site location just because uh, the best or the most successful way for you to get your foot through the door is through a person-to-person -person
in-person interaction, it's harder for them to say no. They're gonna give you the time to look through your resume and application beforehand instead of being filtered out by an ATS system. So yeah, strongly recommend going to an on-site location or even a career fair if you have access to that because your chances of landing that internship will be dramatically higher. Now that you know where and when to apply for these internships, you can focus on what to do before applying. Again, depending on your goal, if you're looking for a larger size company or a bigger name company, you're gonna have to put in more work and gain more experience because the expectations are probably higher. The good thing here is that larger companies like Meta, Amazon, etc., tend to have job postings from the previous years, which you can use as reference to plan out your roadmap on how you're gonna land that internship. I would strongly recommend studying the job description thoroughly just because that's exactly what they're looking for. So if you're able to go ahead and gain the experience, the required qualifications, you're gonna have a higher chance of landing that internship. For mid-sized or even smaller companies, it might be harder for you to find previous years of job postings. So I recommend going for a more generalist approach. Go ahead and try to find the common skills and experience needed for that specific job in that specific niche. Or maybe you can take it a step further and look at industry level experience and try to find a specific skill set that is needed for that industry in that field. Again, depending on these requirements and where you're currently at, you might have to take the extra step and go ahead and learn some new technology, some skills, some tools, some languages, stuff like that, or even gain some experience with volunteer work or unpaid internships, or my personal favorite, build some good quality portfolio projects using the internet. So if you don't have any previous experience, don't worry, you can leverage some of these projects or even certifications and courses to get some. In reality, it's all about how you sell yourself. They don't really care if you built a pipeline using SQL and Python for your previous company, or if you did it yourself for a project. When applying, it's also important to keep in mind that your application is probably going through an ATS system. I've talked about the ATS a lot in some of my previous videos, so go check them out. But what you wanna do is essentially make sure your resume is aligned to the job description as best as possible. You also wanna use an ATS-friendly resume template. I recommend Jake's resume template. I'll leave a link down below for those of you who wanna check it out. Try your best to quantify your experience and your achievements and use the XYZ format when you're writing your bullet points. All right, before I close out the video, I wanna give some general advice, general feedback for those of you who are going through the internship process right now. I know it's not easy, I know it's very challenging, so here's my two cents. Don't apply to jobs that are over a week old. They probably already have hundreds of applicants and you can better spend your time elsewhere. Try to stay away from LinkedIn's easy apply unless you're okay with a lot of competition just because I think it encourages a lot of laziness. The more you individualize and cater your resume and application for each specific job posting, the better your chances. This is a numbers game, but quality still matters. The sooner you set a goal or a target of what you want, the better and more prepared you can be. It's almost never too late to apply and you shouldn't stop applying until you're completely satisfied with the offer. Experience is subjective, not objective. How you sell yourself matters more than how much experience you have. Who you know really matters because a referral can get your foot through the door much quicker, so build a good network. Remember that rejection is part of the game, so expect it and be prepared. The more consistent you are, the less painful it will be. Any experience is better than no experience at all. Just because it's better paid doesn't mean it's better experience. A verbal offer is not an actual offer. I'll leave all the resources I can find down below. I'll even leave specific resources and tools that I use when I was looking for a job. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them down below. I'll do my best to respond or even better, join the Discord community and ask them there. If you guys found this video helpful, a like and subscribe would help the channel out a lot. I wish you all the best in your internship search. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.